Hi. Now, what I've got here is a typical example of what you could be asked about equations of tangents and normals to parametric curves. And this is an interesting question. I've picked this purely because it develops quite a lot of essential features. So we'll work through this, or you might like to pause the video if you feel that you would like to have a go. But what we've got here is find the equation of the tangent and normal to the curve, the parametric curve, x equals t squared and y equals t cubed minus t. And we've got to find that equation of tangent at the point 4 minus 6. Now to do this, what I would normally encourage you to do is to sketch the curve. Now, you don't have to necessarily sketch the exact curve to do this. I just don't want you to be afraid of not having a go. Now, I know that this is not the curve, okay? But it's just to give you an idea of how you can make headway regardless, get to appreciate the problem. What we've got here is a point 4 minus 6. So, if we go 4 minus 6, let's just suppose that point's there. 4 minus 6. And we've got some curve, some parametric curve going through this point. OK, I'm going to pretend I don't know what it looks like. Let's just draw some kind of curve coming through here. Let's say it's that. And I want to find the equation of the tangent to the curve at this point. Well, in this sketch, it looks as if it's going to be something like that. And to find the equation of a tangent, being a straight line, I'm going to use the form y minus y1 equals m bracket x minus x1, a form that hopefully you're familiar with. x1, y1 is a point on the line. That's OK. We've got it here. It's 4 minus 6. The x coordinate is the 4. And the y coordinate is the minus 6. m, though, is the gradient. And we've got to get the gradient at this point. How do we do that? Well, differentiation. We need to find dy by dx. So in order to find dy by dx, we need to find dx by dt and dy by dt and use the chain rule. So let's start off then with finding dx by dt. dx by dt, if we differentiate this with respect to t, we're going to get 2t. And also, we have dy by dt is going to equal, well, differential of t cubed is going to be 3t squared, and the differential of minus t is going to be minus 1. So we know that to find dy by dx, dy by dx equals, by the chain rule, dy by dt times dt by dx. Or you might like to think of this as dy by dt divided by dx by dt. That's another version saying exactly the same thing. Either way, what you come up with for dy by dx is, let's just use this version. It's going to be dy dt, 3t squared minus 1, divided by dx dt, the 2t. If you use this version, you've got to say that dt dx is 1 over 2t, and multiply it with the 3t squared minus 1. You'll come out with the same result. So, we've got dy dx. We've got m, the gradient at any point on the curve. The question is, since this depends on t, then we need to find out what the t value is at the point 4 minus 6. And this is a point that's quite interesting here, that you've got to be very careful with. To do this, to find the t value, Turn to the easier of these two equations, which I think has to be x equals t squared. We know that x is 4 at this point. So we can say that when x is 4, we know that 4 will equal the t squared. And what does that imply? 
Well, to get t, t will be the square root of 4. And the square root of 4 is not just 2. Remember, it is plus or minus 2. So we've got, for this particular example, two values of t. Question is, which one of those two values is the true one? 2 or minus 2? How do we check? Well, what we've got to do is turn to the corresponding y value. We want a t value that is consistent with not only the x, but also the y value. So if we took when t was 2, when t was 2, what does y come out to be? Well, y is equal to t cubed minus t. So if we were to do t is 2, 2 cubed minus 2 turns out to be 8 minus 2, which is 6. That's no good, because we wanted minus 6. Don't necessarily assume that it must be minus 2. You might have made a mistake earlier on in your calculations. I would check it out. So let's just try out when t equals minus 2. What do we have? For y, we've got minus 2 all cubed minus the t value, minus minus 2. So here we get minus 8 plus 2, which is minus 6. Great. OK, that's what we wanted. So clearly we can see that the t value at this particular point is when t equals minus 2. So we can make progress now. We can get the value of m, the gradient at this point. So we can say that when t equals 2, what is dy dx going to be? Well, dy by dx is going to equal 3 times minus 2 squared. Let's just write it in, show a bit of working, OK? Then minus 1, and that's all divided by 2 times minus 2. So work it out, and what you should find you get is 11 on the top over minus 4, which is minus 11 over 4. So that's the gradient of our tangent here. So when it comes to finding the equation of the tangent, we're in a good position. So just write an intro here now. We can say equation of tangent at the point here, 4 minus 6, is. So what's it going to be? Well, it's going to be y minus y1, y1 there, which is the minus 6 equals m, the gradient, which is minus 11 over 4, times x minus x1. x1, x1 is the 4. So all we need to do is just tidy this up. And if you say multiply by 4 and rearrange it into the format, say ax plus by plus c equals 0, I'll leave you to do that. What you should find you get is 11x plus 4y minus 20 equals 0. Now when it comes to finding the equation of the normal, the line perpendicular to our tangent here, then the gradient is going to change. How does that gradient change? Well, we should know it is the negative reciprocal of the gradient of the tangent. So we know that the gradient of the normal will be plus 4 elevenths. So when it comes to the equation of the normal, let's just write that in, equation of the normal at 4 minus 6. What's that going to be? Well, it's going to be y minus y1, so that's minus minus 6 equals m, the gradient, which we've seen now is going to be 4 elevenths, so that would be 4 elevenths, the negative reciprocal then of this. Bracket x minus x1, x minus 4. 
And again, if we wanted to write this in the form ax plus by plus c equals zero, just times through by 11, rearrange, and what you should find that you get is 4x minus 11y minus 82 equals zero. Okay, just leave it up to you to check that out. Well, I hope that's given you some idea then how we can find equations of tangents normals to a curve. And you don't really need to have the exact curve drawn in. But just for the record, if you did want to know what that curve looked like, well, I will draw it in for you. So I'll show you what it looks like. Well, if we draw our axis, we can say that when t is naught, can you see that x will be 0 and y will be 0? So it will go through the origin. And also, when t is 1, x is 1 but y is 0 so we have a point here at 1 0 and that occurs when t is 1. Now if you put values of t greater than 1 into this equation you'll see that y grows at a faster rate than x and x stays positive and y stays positive so the curve is going to look something like this it's going to rise very rapidly like that when we go between 0 and 1, x remains positive going between 0 and 1, and y though is negative. So the curve comes round here like this. Now for negative values of t, we end up with a reflection of this part of the curve in the x-axis. So the curve goes round and then back down like this. Now the point that we were doing, the point 4 minus 6, was down here. So that was our point 4 minus 6. And when we had our equation of a tangent, then we had a line something like this. And the normal, well that would have been a line at right angles. Okay, so I hope that's given you some idea then of how we can do this, even though we didn't have a sketch of the curve.